good or bad, what is one thing you'd completely rid the world of? I saw someone wrote neurological conditions in another post similar to this, such as Asperger's and ADHD but I disagree with that as a person with a neurological condition, they make us unique in nice ways. Neurodegenerative diseases is the right answer, having some atypical people makes us unique and that's people who can think in different ways but straight up deterioration of the brain is heartbreaking for the victim and their peers. My great grandma basically raised my mom and babysat me and my sister for years every weekday, watched her not only forget who I was but who my mom was too, by the end she couldn't remember who my grandparents were and that she needed a walker. The only positive out of all this is that when she passed it was a lot easier since she had kinda been gone for a while. That's how it felt with my grandfather. I have fond memories of playing chess with him when I was little, but I never really got to know him. He lived far, and we didn't get to visit very often so by the time I was old enough to comprehend his experience and he was close enough for us to see each other, he was already pretty far gone. When he passed, it still sucked. But in the end he could barely speak so in a way it was dot 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 restful. He and my grandmother both had dementia, and I dread the day that doctors might tell me my mom has it too. Yeah, I have autism. I guess it makes me unique in the way that my brain is not the norm. But it's pretty much just made my life more difficult. I'm not some coder or savant of any kind. My autism gave me sensory issues. It made it way more difficult for me to make friends or date. How the fuck is any of that a positive for me? It's great if you're happy with your atypical brain. But I just will never be there. It's not my reality. Also, I'm verbal. A lot of people with autism are not, they'll need care their entire life. How the fuck is that oh unique? No it's a disability. It disables them. Not good. I've been thinking about this. Might it be possible to somehow use encryption, blockchain to create a verifiably unedited video format? The idea being. The video gets locked away and encrypted with geotag data as it's captured, frame by frame. It could be opened and used without that ID data, but to verify via the encrypted ID data, you would need the device that captured the data. I know nothing about this stuff, so I'm probably showing my ass. But if someone knows why this couldn't be done it might be informative to hear. Edit. Just to summarize my takeaways from this thread in case you don't want to dig. This is somewhere in the realm of feasible, in the works, already being done to the extent possible, or begging some pretty big questions, depending on who you ask. My reaction is that this might really be a branding marketing problem, a need for an official stamp of approval, if you will, which might be solved if this becomes a bigger problem or if the underlying tech reaches a point of maturity. And you need someone to verify IDs for alcohol. I know that can be solved with technology, but that doesn't mean the laws will be updated to allow it also. You still need some humans there to help out with the machines and make sure people aren't stealing or vandalizing the store. Also, human cashiers are way faster than self-checkout, so some stores won't want to dedicate the necessary floor space to have enough machines to make up for the slower throughput. Niger has a shop and scan. Scan it to your phone and scan a checkout QR at the self-service register. Pay and leave. It keeps a running total for you, pulls up coupons that apply. All very good. Only downside every once in a while it makes a cashier scan few items to verify your honesty. I get it, 
you can't trust the public, so all in all fast and convenient. Payphones are required at public, community pools, edit for those confused, payphones are required because they can be used to call 911 in an emergency, for free, without having to worry about coverage and service or anything else that can pop up in an emergency situation, unlocking a phone, allowing anyone in call, children to be able to call, plus, EMS automatically knows exactly where you are. I honestly don't think it's a bad idea. We I vets, Holocaust survivors, which will probably make it that much easier for deniers. History repeats itself. Edit. I didn't say history will repeat itself. I said history repeats itself. As in present tense as in right now. See the comments by myself and others. My great uncle is 99. He was shot down in a B-17, parachuted into a Dutch beet field and hid there until the Germans gave up looking. Dutch underground kept him safe for three weeks, handed him off to the Belgians who got him to England for repatriation. He was sea kayaking until about five years ago. He's still mentally sharp but is starting to have health issues. He says thank God he can drink wine with thickener added. Sorry for your loss. Yay, I'm part of the older than usual parents gang too. I'm almost 30 and dad is almost 70. And the thing is dot dot I was his first dot he has kids as young as four. I hope he lives for at least another few decades, and wouldn't be surprised if he did. He's pretty healthy for his age, but having older parents that thought is sometimes in the back of my mind like they don't have that much time left. Don't want to lose either of them. But no I probably will sooner than the average person. That feeling sucks. The Maldives are a small independent island chain off the coast of India. Their average elevation is 1.6 meters, 5 feet, above sea level. With rising sea levels, while the islands will certainly still exist in 25 years. In 50 years the islands will face crisis as the seas truly begin to encroach upon the coasts, and in 100 years, half the country will be underwater. Lots of people will be forced to move and may become climatic refugees. This is a stretch. Only if the major companies operating them purchase each other, which the Fox acquisition by Disney was already a stretch. They only didn't get hit because there's still other competition. This would require Apple to acquire Netflix for example for them to be willing to combine and package services. More likely we'd see underperforming services maybe teaming up to bundle themselves, like Paramount Plus and Discovery Plus or something like that. I have this working theory that as of 2021 the singer Elvis is just starting to be culturally forgotten. When I was younger I used to see Elvis references every now and again. He was pretty huge I guess, even though he was way before my time. Now I swear it has been years since I've heard or seen him referenced. To test his theory I ask people if they remember Elvis. And I get the total oh yay, Elvis that you might get from some obscure show from the 90s. Facebook has been around for 16-17 years. When MySpace shit the bed and lost most of its membership by the late 2000s, most people thought Facebook would die out within a few years. While I do not check it much anymore, it still seems to be going strong. Been on it since 2005. I can see it's still around in 25 years. Maybe a really niche thing and probably evolved into a more futuristic form. But I doubt it is going to fade away into obscurity. Honestly, 
They're doing fine. Population surveys in Canada show only one of 17 groups in serious decline, the rest are stable. The bears are just coming off the ice earlier, they're still apex predators on land. Only one group, the one in decline, had become so dependent on hunting seals on ice that the changing climate is impacting their winter survival strategy faster than they can adapt. Now an interesting thing that may contribute to the eventual decline of polar bears that is not starvation related, they're still capable of producing fertile offspring with grizzlies. We're seeing more and more light brown prillies as the populations mix with grizzlies moving north and polar bears not going out onto the ice for as long or at all. As far as I know not a biologist but from what I've gathered, while that is a nice dividing line that still has its issues, so there could be a genies of rats with say 6 plus species, a can have viable offspring with B, B can with both A and C, C can with both B and D, D can with both C and E, E can with D and F. F can with E but not with A etc. This was some genies of rats in the Amazon, National Geographic article lurk. So which are the species? That definition of viable offspring A and B are, but so are B and C, so are C and D, so are D and E, so are E and F, so that chain would make A and F. But they can't produce viable offspring so they'd be different. I think you see the circular logic. The way I look at it is a math problem. Listing species is a discrete statement, like categorizing as whole numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. Each different one is some distance from another. while in nature the difference between groups of animals is a continuous one. So the rat species we're listing them as species 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 whereas it's more they should be like 1.5, 2.1, 2.6, 2.2, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5. Two, etc. Each number is its own species but if the distance between two of them is less than one you could have viable offspring. Now the issue really comes down to nature is complicated and species is just a nice way humans have used to try and simplify the classification of living things. I think that is still true in majority of cases but this would be a grey area. Polar bears are technically a subspecies of grizzlies who branched off recently. They're just close enough genetically that they can produce fertile young. Apparently coyotes and some wolves can do the same thing as well as some other examples. So it's not an isolated case. As we get more habitat loss. Forcing species to interact with each other where they otherwise wouldn't, we may start seeing this kind of thing more often. There are a lot of exceptions and grey areas in nature. It's like we were taught mammals checked particular boxes except platypus. Marsupials are a little odd too. Curriculums will change with new info. Hopefully lol. Not sure what they're teaching exactly in school now though. Graduated college a bit ago but I try to keep up with stuff xd. <laughs> Gasoline or internal combustion engine passenger cars. Most countries have now banned ICE cars after 2025 to 2035 which is accelerating the trend that was already there, while electric vehicles are only a few percentage of the market right now, they will be at cost parity within a few years, and after that will rapidly overtake the market. In 2008 nobody had a smartphone, and 10 years later virtually everyone did. The switchover will happen much faster than people realize. Cable, satellite subscriptions, hell, 
we may be past streaming at that point as well, with the news this week that the NFL is looking to move Sunday ticket off of DirecTV and onto Apple TV plus it's just the continuation of the death rattle for traditional content distribution, the biggest draw for people maintaining their subscriptions at this point has been live sports. But we're almost to the point where we can 100% pivot to streaming and not miss a thing. Truth. The ability of those with power, money or influence to distort what is real is something that I think your average person has not come to grips with. An entirely new form of critical thinking will have to be adopted and, sadly, based on what I've seen in the last few years, the average human being will not be able to distinguish between the truth and utter bullshit. This will be especially true once video evidence can be distorted to fit certain narratives or agendas. The Internet, between government takeover of transmission lines and the continued restriction of international access, not to mention increasing hacking directed at individuals, the Internet will be a series of regulated, restricted connections to particular addresses and no others. You'll hardly notice the difference. After all, your search engine brings you the same crud no matter what you ask it to show now. Oh, did I mention the licensing fees for access? I predict another wave of antique collecting is on the horizon. In the late 90s, mid oh it was really popular to collect, sell, flip old antiques just like you see on Antiques Roadshow. Collectibles are hot right now, they always are, but this time I think it's gonna be different. Ask yourself what do you own that is truly unique. To own anything make in America pre-1945, is going to be such a huge flex by the year 2045. Batteries. I have a good feeling that something is coming that will make batteries a thing of the past found only in a museum. Don't get me wrong, they're awesome now and certainly needed. But if we could get around that need and store energy in a new type of supercapacitor with embedded micro-generation, that would be preferable. Let's go science. The ozone layer has actually been recovering since the hole in it was discovered in the 80s, because of a worldwide ban on the substance that damaged it that was used in sprays, air conditioning and refrigerators. Maybe you're confusing global warming but that's a separate issue. Now, older millennial here for the most part, we have strong empathy toward Gen Z. We're all getting fucked over from decisions made by boomers, some older Gen X. We're all in this together, and while we're pulling ourselves up by the bootstraps, we want Gen Z to have it better than we did at their age. We also tend to respect Gen Z more than our predecessors. Yes, someone older respecting someone younger, and honestly they've earned it. Sure, every generation does stupid shit. But for the most part, they're driven, outspoken, in tune with the world, and have their heads on pretty damn well. Both Millennials and Gens have been disadvantaged by a boomer-shaped economy. Millennials came of age after the 2008 crash, and Gens grew up in its aftermath. Millennials grew up with the early internet, Gens are digital natives. Both generations will be greatly affected by global warming. This makes me doubt there will be as much generational clash between them as between boomers and millennials. The only thing I've really seen so far is a few millennial moms who cry about their skinny jeans online. I'm not sure what role Jenks and the oldest millennials will play in the future as most of the power is still with boomers. As I understand it boomers did not think themselves worse off than their parents, 
but mostly thought their parents were square and had social norms that were restrictive. Millennials and Gens have objectively been dealt a worse hand, as economic inequality has surpassed that of the Gilded Age. Global warming is causing a climate crisis, and life expectancy has been decreasing for the first time in generations. Boomers are not entirely responsible, but they and the silent generation shaped the policies that got us here, while they benefited from strong social democratic policies in their youth. Most millennials I know don't consider gens as coddled but rather in the same boat. Most Zoomers I know don't like the current economic and ecological situation either. That said, my social environment might be biased. I agree that older generations always enjoy power through their savings, but as Boomers are also the biggest living generation and Millennials own less than Boomers when they were young, this makes the difference even greater.